Okay, uh, the, on this beautiful August morning, we're sitting here on Larry Smith's lot, and we're going to go through a basic lesson on fundamental septic tank operation and how to avoid, particularly with a properly functioning septic system, is to avoid that nasty habit in Costa Rica of the wonderful waste baskets with dirty toilet paper sitting beside the toilets. First thing we have here we're going to be seeing is a fiberglass septic tank system. Now the first issue of this is we've m handled just with four of us. These are light enough that we do not have to haul in big equipment. We have a backhoe sitting right here. We didn't use it. We did it all by hand. So logistically that is much more superior. But also the other fact is that the fiberglass will have at least double the life expectancy of a heavy cement tank uh, without the environmental impact and of course in a country where the ground is shaking from time to time having a rigid concrete tank if they crack they're worthless uh, this will move with the ground so we, we basically uh, easily double to triple the life expectancy I don't know what the price comparison is because to me it's irrelevant versus something that works something doesn't work is not a, a good value anyways. This will be the en entrance to the tank is right here at the end of the tank. This is where it flow will flow in from the house. Now the other thing is to take note of in a septic tank it must be this shape. That is not by accident. It must be long and narrow. So if somebody tries to sell you a round tank you know they haven't got a clue about how septic works because when that water with the solids flows in here it must settle out in this tank. This is your settling tank. Now, many people it may be familiar with septic tanks and think this is two compartments. It is not. This is one entire compartment. This is your primary process for the solids to settle out. So it must have time to flow through here and settle properly. If the tank is round, can't happen. I mean, the tank would have to be huge to be here, and we don't have the space for it, and what's the point? I mean, this shape is very significant. So that's what the first process is our settling. Now, this is gonna come through the tank, settle out, and then the water enters what looks like a periscope here. This water's gonna flow out down that orange tube and enter the secondary, what's called here a fafa. Uh, anyways, it's a biodigester. And I'm gonna go down and open this up so that now, these are the vents for breathing of the system after the fact. This secondary tank is full of crushed rock. Now, imagine, think of this as Larry's home for his 10 billion very good friends, which is all of the bacteria that's going to work in here and process, help digest, hence the biodigester, digest the human waste that are coming into there. So that is all, that is as full as it gets. It basically feeds down the tube, comes in the bottom, and of course is rising up and flowing up. And when it gets up here, this is where it enters the field system for the final leg of this journey from black water to perfectly harmless. Let me ask you, inter interrupt you and ask one question. How often will the main tank need to be sucked out? Uh, in a perfect world, uh, a family of four. It's, out, it, it, it's very subjective to the household, but I would say you're looking at once every three to five years. Okay. The, Tell me again, Trevor, the material, the material of this tank and the shape of it. Why is that important? The fiberglass is much more du durable than concrete is. Uh, and particularly because concrete, well, first of all, will decay in time, but more importantly, if we have the ground shaking, they'd be known to crack. And of course, they crack, then you've defeated your entire purpose. Whereas a fiberglass is flexible, so when the ground starts doing a little jiggling, it's not going to affect the tank. And this tank is sitting on a base of sand, and you can see, looking around this one, this is all uh, what we call huevito, or huevos. It's, it's basically river stone. It's all small river so it's all nice and round so think of that as a big first of all it's not sharp and pointed so it's not going to bother a tank but more importantly it's like a shock absorber so anything around there cannot come in and affect the tanks now uh, this tank is full of crossbars there's crossbars going all the way through it to support it to make sure it doesn't collapse 
but the simple rule there is you never, never leave them empty. If you come in and you have your, pump, your tank pumped out, as the truck is leaving, the water is running, filling the tank again, because water is heavier than soil. So as long as the tank is full, it has more weight than anything around it. So it will never, never be a problem. That's the only rule about, well, no septic tank is a good idea, but in lightweight tanks, absolutely, they must be full all the time. No. Anyways, moving on, as I said, we have habits, but lots of habits, we have are bad habits. They keep doing something over and over again that does not work and is not fundamentally sensible. So the whole point is how do we make this field work? Now the typical habit is to put orange, uh, we call it weeping, weeping tile in Canada, uh, Americans tend to call, call it French drain. Doesn't work, a disastrous idea. You cannot, there is no tube actually manufactured to build the field with. We had to take normal, uh, this SDR third, or 26 tube, which is a heavy tube, and what we did is we drilled drainage holes in it because nobody makes a tube that actually functions correctly. Uh, it's all underneath now. Uh, we'll, let's say if we, if we back up here, Larry, we'll have, we can't see it because the, the holes are in the bottom, but basically what we do is we, we drill a line of holes, five inch, five eighths inch holes, eight inches apart. So what it does is the tube fundamentally still behaves like a tube and distributes as it's flowing out of the biodigester into the field. This tube is all level. They typically want to unlevel them, but what happens is you flood part of the field, and that's the problem with those other drainage tubes. It's, it'll flood the front part and get, nothing will get there. So our idea is that when we drill these holes at four and eight o'clock, the bottom curve of the tube still behaves like a tube and it carries the water throughout the entire field. Then when the water comes up, it'll start weeping out all the holes over the entire field. If you want a field that's good for 50, 60 years, then this is how you do it. Anyway, but that's very important. So I mean, we set our branches up here. So this all becomes the field. Now it's got a foot of rock below it. Uh, we interrupted the process here so that you could see the tubes before we bury them all. But so, you, you otherwise just... Otherwise we're fundamentally done here. You just uh, explained something to me that really made sense. In other words, the whole thing's level, so the whole thing is leaching everywhere instead of, instead of it leaching in one spot more yeah. than the other. Yeah, if it, you put a slope on it, if you use normal tool and put a slope on it, it's all going to get flooded at the end. And if you use weeping tile, it's all going to get flooded right out of the tank. So, you know, the issue is even dispersion. You want the whole thing leaching. This is what they call SDR 26. So this is about three or four times the thickness of typical what they call sanitary pipe, which should be completely outlawed. They shouldn't be allowed to use it either, other than on maybe drain water off a roof, but for anything important in septic, absolute, an absolute disaster. All pipes are cleaned first, so that proper adhesion. They're deburred and cleaned first, and then they're glued together properly. Function well, so you never have a problem. Uh, this should never ever need any kind of clean out in any way, shape, or form, just because the way it's designed and put together, there's no, there's nothing there to block anything up. But, anyways, with that, have yourself a good day, and we're done with septic tank 101. Thank okay. you.